All right, what is up? So this is an impromptu video. I wanna give you 10 things that you can do anytime, anywhere that are drumming related. Studies show that the elite in any field not only practice their instrument, but they also do a ton of music related activities. Well, if you're a musician elite in your field, they do a ton of activities related to what they do. So for us, that looks like things that are anything but playing the drums, right? But still related to that. So if you've put in a couple hours on the kit, you're like, look, I wanna still do something music related, but kind of burn, I need to take a break from practicing. This, These are 10 things that you can do. The first one is watch a music documentary. All right, this one is like the easiest. Just turn on Netflix, go on YouTube. There's some fantastic ones. YouTube has a great one on Jojo Mayer. Uh, Netflix, you can watch The Wrecking Crew. You can watch a Ginger Baker documentary. Uh, you can watch, uh, there's another one, Standing in the Shadows of Motown. I don't know if that one's on Netflix. Um, you can watch, um, oh, there's so many great ones. There's also the Ken Burns Jazz Series. Uh, that'll take tons of time, right? It's a great one that comes in book format too. Ken Burns just released a new one on country music and believe it or not, it's fantastic. So you can watch a music documentary or a music related film. The second one is you can read a biography on your favorite musician, all right? Right now I'm reading one that Ben Folds wrote and it's just inspiring to me so much. There's uh, Miles Davis has a great one, Sting has a great one. There's tons of great books on great musicians and great drummers, just look them up. Go to your bookstore, grab one, order one from online, and then dig in and read it. It is a music-related activity. It's really going to help you on the drums and give you a different perspective. All right, the third one is download new to you music. All too often we get into a box and we're like, oh, I don't want to listen to that because I, you know, I'm a punk rocker, I'm metal, you know, I only listen to jazz. Oh, stop that. Go on any social, you know, outlet that you're on, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, whatever, and then just ask people. Say, hey. I need some new music. Give me some suggestions. Boom, 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 boom. I do this all of the time on my Instagram, and I always found, find a killer album or two that I usually can't put down for weeks at a time. So new to you music. Stretch yourself. The fourth thing is watch recorded concerts. I can't tell you. Don't just like watch random YouTube clips and get two minutes into it. Watch a concert of a band that you love, because as that show evolves, that band, believe it or not, puts a ton of time into that show. And so you watching that entire show is gonna help you understand the scope of their music. They also get warmed up after two or three songs. Like you can't just watch four minutes of it and then cut out. Really dig into some of these live performances uh, that are posted online because some of them are just gold. The fifth thing is transcribe a drum part that you love. And you may be like, Stephen, I'm actually never transcribed. Good, no better time to start than now with some free time, right? Sit down and start with a very, very simple one start with it just being one measure long and then once you hit one measure then do a little bit bigger don't say i'm going to transcribe this whole song right how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time not that you want to eat an elephant but if you did that would be how you ate the elephant and that's the same way with music digest it once you get good at that okay i'm going to do the next measure just do one measure at a time one beat at a time but transcribe drum parts that you love you learn so much by repeating that music over and over and over. Before you even sit down at the drums, you almost know the part, I promise you that. All right, so the sixth thing is learn the 40 rudiments. All too often, you're like, Steven, if I'm not sitting at a pad, you can do rudiments anywhere. I used to write them on a note card, the rudiment I was focusing on, and that note card went with me everywhere. I would pull it out and I would re I would repeat the sticking, you know, paired it right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, because it's a new sticking to you. I would play it on my chest or on my legs. I would sit there and go, okay, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. If it's if it's a flam taps, you know. Wherever I was, whenever I saw that card, I'd go, oh, I need to, you know. You can do that while you're waiting in line. You can do that while you're waiting at a red light. Whatever you want to, wherever you are, you can use your hands to play those rhythms. And then when you pick up the sticks, it's going to make it so much easier. So learn the 40 rudiments in your spare time. That's found time, time you didn't think you had. All right, the seventh one is take an online drum class. You have so much more benefit. Look, I'm not that old, but it wasn't that long ago that we did not have access to great online education. Find a drummer that you love, find a program you can plug into, and take an online drum class or a music class or a class and something else that's going to inspire you. There's tons of those out there. All right, the eighth one is work on your drum tuning. This is something we avoid as drummers. I was dealing with it with this tom right here yesterday. I pulled it out. I'm like, I'm going to put my 8 inch on there. And then guess what? The 8 inch or 10 inch. And guess what? It doesn't sound good. So what? I'm like, oh, now I got to tune. Just take the drum off and then spend some time 
searching it out and seeing where it sounds best and where its voice sits best. Again, it's something you can do in your spare time and it's something that I recommend to my students that they do outside of their practice time so it doesn't frustrate them in their practice time. The ninth thing is do some critical listening. This is not just like turning the music on and then doing stuff around the house. This is where you sit down with a very specific set of songs or an album. You put that album on, then you, I love to, to lay down. You can sit down, you close your eyes, and that starts, what that does is that starts closing off senses. And it's even better if you can use headphones. Uh, I love the ones, the Vic Firth isolation ones. Uh, and that way it blocks out any other sound. Any time you can decrease the number of, uh, the, the amount of input that's coming in. And what you want to do with critical listening is you want to listen to that song. You want to say, okay, what's a guitar doing? Oh, cool. What's that? What's the drums doing in relation to? Okay, I didn't know the bass. Actually, I didn't know the bass was doing that. What's this song even about? I've never really listened to the lyrics. You listen to it over and over and over and over. This is called deep listening. This is critical listening, and this is ear training. Your ear is something that can be trained. And then you may even be like, let me go pick out that song on the piano. Huh? Oh, there's the melody. I get that. Oh, that makes sense because it's in the key of B flat. Whatever that may be, right? Search and spend time doing music-related activities like that. And critical deep listening is one that goes a long way when you get on the gig. And this last one, number 10, is learn a new song. You don't have to be sitting at the drums to learn the song. People ask me all the time, like, Steven, because I, I have been known to learn large amounts of music in a very quick time. I once learned 64 songs in two and a half days uh, and then played the gig and got the gig and was at that gig for like six months, right? That was my full-time income and that's how I got it. I don't recommend doing that, but the way you do that, the way you learn songs away from the kit is you listen to them continually. You listen to them in the car. You listen to them while you're working out. You listen to them around the house. You listen to them while you go to sleep. If you want to learn a song away from the drum set, then begin listening to it away from the drum set. And then when you get to the drums, all you have to deal with is the mechanical part of like, can I play that part? You already know where the verse is. You already know where the chorus is. You already know what the lyrics do. You already know about that weird measure after the second chorus. All of that stuff has been dealt with in your listening time and your kit time can be spent really trying to learn just the mechanical parts of what the drummer is actually playing. All right, so that's 10 tips for things that you can do anytime, anywhere that are drumming related and will, will help your drumming grow by leaps and bounds. If you have not subscribed to the channel, do that. Click that subscribe button below as well. Turn on post notifications because I post here all the time. Leave me a comment. What is your favorite drumming related activity that you do? Uh, and as well, if this has helped you, share it with somebody that you think it may help. Whatever you do, I'll see you here in the next video.